This video is going to show you how to use graphical analysis from Vernier. It's an app on the iPad. So the icon is in the top right hand corner of my screen. It just says graphical. So I'm going to open up the program and the first screen you're going to see is all your experiments. So there's some experiments that come along with the app, some kind of sample data there. And I want to create an experiment. And if I'm just putting in data, like I'm given uh, a data table or I've recorded data in some other way, I'm going to choose the bottom choice, which is manual entry. First thing you want to do, and it's kind of counterintuitive to the workflow, is you want to go back and name this experiment. Otherwise, you're going to forget what it is and your graphical app will just be a mess. So in the top left hand corner, I'm going to hit experiments, that little green word. And I'm going to um, just hold down the word experiment, just do a long press there, and then this screen opens up. So I'm just going to call this a demo. Hit done, and now it's named demo. So now I won't forget what that is. All right, and I'll go back in there. And since I'm manually entering data, you don't see any data, I'm going to do a long press on above the X. And let's uh, put my uh, data in here. So let's say my uh, X value is going to be the time in... Uh, and then the units go below. You don't put them in parentheses in here. It'll do that for you. So put the units. Let's say my time is in years. And I'm going to hit done. And let's say my Y is, I don't know, height in centimeters. So I have time and height. If I want to enter data, I'm just going to put in, click on that first cell. And let's say, well, at zero years. And when you hit the return key, and this can be confusing, um, especially if you're typing in data from a data table, it's going to go over to the Y value or the next, it's going to go horizontally rather than vertically. So maybe the first height is 50 centimeters and I hit return again, it's going to go down to my next data point. And after one year, let's say it was 75 centimeters, after two years, 83 centimeters, and three years it was 100 centimeters. And if I want to get rid of the keyboard, just in the bottom right hand corner, I can touch that and that disappears. So now I have my data entered in. If I want to graph it, I'm going to go to the top right hand corner where the wrench is. And I can have one graph, two graphs, three graphs, or the table. Right now I'm just in table view. So I'm going to select one graph because I only have one graph of data. And I have height and time. It's automatically going to put the first variable on the y or on the x-axis, the horizontal axis. If I double tap the screen, it's going to auto scale. Because you notice before I did that, I couldn't see any of the data. And so if I double tap the screen, it uh, goes back to the original, which is 10 and 10 on each side. Double tap it again, and now I auto scale. Let's say I don't like the auto scale, I can just do a pinch and zoom, just like you would on uh, like the Photos app. Anytime you want to zoom or zoom in, zoom in or zoom out on something, I can change the scale vertically by pinching my fingers, and I can change the scale horizontally by pinching with my fingers that way, or I can change both at once. So you're going to want to, the scale is pretty important, um, so you'll want to mess around with that. So for now I'll just auto scale here, and I like to actually make sure I have zero, zero in my screen. I think that's a really important sort of reference point. So in the bottom left hand corner I have zero, zero in my screen. If I just auto scale, you may assume that your first point is at zero, zero, but it's not. Okay, so now I want to do some analysis of my data. I can click and drag and highlight data points. And it can you can do an annotation where you can put a note about it. You can do statistics where it will give you like the average and all this stuff. What we're going to be doing is a lot of fitting, and I want to do a linear fit. Um, you'll always want to try a linear fit with this. So I'm going to do a linear fit here, and it gives me my equation, y equals mx plus b, tells me what my m is, what my b is, the correlation, and the RMSE, which is the root mean square error. Um, if you want to get rid of this fit, this is where the app gets a little bit annoying. If you tap on the um, three, where it says at the top right hand corner, where it says 3.0000 years, if I tap on that, it brings up this screen again. Also, if I tap on the other gray box on the left hand side, it brings up this screen. If I just tap Anywhere now, actually, it brings up this screen. So a lot of times, I may want to delete it. What used to happen with this app, and it may happen now, not so much they fixed it, where you accidentally select a data point. So I have one data point selected here, and it actually won't let me. Um, but if I, if I highlight all of them, it unselects the other ones. It used to, if you have the old version of the app, 
not do that, and it was really annoying, you'd have eight different selections on your screen. So if I want to get back to the data table, I just top right hand corner, go back to the table here. And let's say I want to linearize it. So I'm going to add a new table. And again, if I just single press on that column header, it gives me this kind of cut, copy paste menu, which I don't want. I'm going to do a long press. I want to rename this. So let's say I think it's a square root function. So I want to square the y-axis, so I'm going to do height squared. So I'm going to do height. And it's very important that you change the label here, otherwise it doesn't make any sense because you just you have height and height and you've squared everything. So now my units are going to be centimeters squared. You have to have to change the units. And then what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to go through and I'm going to square each of these. So what is this? 2,500. What's 75 squared? Yeah, 75 squared is going to be 5,625. 83 squared, and this is kind of the annoying part. You have to do this manually. Um, but we're hoping, I've asked, I've requested that they put in a um, feature where you can have the computer calculate this for you. Anyway, so now you have your linearized column of data, so you're going to go back and, hey, let's look at the graph. And let's just look at one graph for now. Oh, nothing's changed. Well, that's because it's not going to automatically update your x and y axis for you. You notice on your y axis, it's still the height. So I'm going to click on the y axis here, and I'm going to uncheck height, because I don't want height graphed anymore, and I want to graph height squared. And I click on the y axis again. Clicking on the x or y axis is going to reveal the options for that. And then I want to select all my data points. And actually, first, let's zoom out so we have a sense of what this looks like. Select all my data points, and let's do another linear fit. And then we would compare to see if that was more or less linear. Let's say we want to see both of them at once. I could do two graphs. So the first top graph is going to be height squared versus time, and the bottom graph is uh, height versus time. And then I could select both of them at once and do my curve, my linear fit here. And I could say, oh, yeah, that made it a lot more linear. Oh, no, that doesn't look more linear. I can look at my over-under pattern. Um, the RMSE, you don't necessarily want to look at that. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than just how big the number is. So the fact that the RMSE went up when we linearized it or attempted to linearize it does not really mean that it's any worse a correlation. Uh, and that's how you kind of do the basics with your experiments with graphical analysis when you're putting in, in data manually. If you are given data, let's say you're given some data from the video physics app. So let's open up some data from video physics. So this was emailed to me by my lab partner. I'm just going to select the .cmbl file, open in graphical, and again it's going to give it some meaningless name, so I'm going to say tennis ball roll, because that's what I did. And now here's my data from video physics. It's always going to default to almost data overload. First couple things you want to do. One, use that gear and change the appearance from lines to points. I don't know why they have lines as a default. You got to do that for all your graphs. It's kind of silly. So now that we have the points, we just want to look at kind of, we want to focus on the data. Um, for instance, if you want to see the table, you can select the table, and it gives you all the table there. But let's just look at one graph, and I want to look at my x versus time. So this will give me my x position as a function of time, and again, I can highlight that, do my linear fit, and I can get a physics equation from that. If I want to, um, you can draw prediction graphs using this kind of pencil in the square box. Uh, we're not going to really do much with that this year. Um, if I go back to the table view, I can get the actual numbers for that. So if I need to record that on uh, in my packet, you can get the actual numbers. So this is going to be the time in the first column, the x position left and right in the second column, the y position vertically the third column, and then it's going to actually calculate 
the velocity for you, which is pretty neat. So that's how you use graphical analysis to either put in data or to analyze data from video physics.